quarterfinals. Two games for you, Croatia against Brazil. But we'll kick things off by looking ahead to the big one in the afternoon, Netherlands against Argentina. Uh, for more on that, just a reminder, take a look at the odds. Argentina are favourites going into the tie to make it through to the semi-finals. The Dutch at 13 to 10. Uh, let's welcome in, shall we, Don Hutchinson is with us. It's been a while, Don, but we don't care about you for the moment because Pascal Camperman is here, our <laughs> Dutch football ex expert. Pascal, how are you feeling? Uh, well, a little bit nervous, uh, to be honest, but well, also a lot of confidence for the game of tomorrow, I think. That's good to hear. How are the feeling in Holland? Do they re recognize themselves as underdogs going into this tie? Yeah, I do think so. Uh, the, the feeling in the group stage was not that good. Um, people in Holland thought, well, it was a little bit boring, the games in the group stage. But after the USA game, well, there was more confidence. And the, if there is a result, of course, people say, hey, OK, now it's going on the tournament. Uh, maybe we will go into the semi-finals or maybe even into the final. So, yeah, more people are more enthusiastic right now uh, after the USA game. But, of course, if you see the game, it's, it was not that good. It's not the typical Dutch football, I think. But, well, it was a little bit better than the three games in the group stage. My concern would be, Craig, from these four, the four quarter-finals, this one has got two of the biggest names, but I think it might be the less appealing to watch in the sense that I think other teams have been playing better football. Well, that's it then. It's 4-4. Four, four. <laughs> yes, well, that'd be brilliant if it was. <laughs> well, I think the Dutch, as Pascal said, have, have gone, about, gone about this competition so far in a different manner. Now, some of that might be down to the fact that they haven't played well enough and have been pushed back and have had to defend. And, and maybe they're just a little bit more cautious as well. Look, Depay wasn't fit to start the tournament. He's had some game time. That's a partnership with sort of Gakpo coming from a bit deeper that's, that's working for them. But I just don't think the Dutch are in a position that they're going to go and really dominate a game. Uh, we saw some changes in the middle of the park with Klip Miners, uh, uh, Darun coming in. And so I, don't, I really don't know what he's going to do mm. in that position. I think that's the area where he has got maybe one or two decisions to make, but particularly with Messi playing. Pascal, what do you think, if any changes we're going to see from the starting 11 that beats the USA, particularly, as Craig mentioned, trying to stop Lionel Messi? Yeah, well, I don't think it will. I think it will be the same starting lineup uh, if you compare it to the USA uh, game. And of course, they knew uh, Lionel Messi is a, a big threat, of, uh, and they have to defend him very well. Uh, maybe one of the central defenders will pick him up, and and well, of course, it's uh, very important to see the, the your Frankie de Jong in midfield. There's no doubt about it. But position next to Frankie de Jong will it be Martin de Rhone again? I think so. So uh, he has. To, that's a very important uh, player as well, uh, defensively in, in the Dutch squad. Um, and yeah, they have to defend solid like they did so far, because uh, the defense, there's nothing wrong with it in this tournament so far. But, but like you said, well, in, in uh, up front, we do have some problems. Memphis is on his way back, I think, after his injury. Gakpo is doing okay. Uh, position on number Number 10 position, class, and I think he will start again. But yeah, maybe it can be Steven Berghuis is, is, is also possible. But um, well, I think the, the starting lineup will be the same uh, as last game. Is, isn't that amazing, right? If you look at all the quarterfinals, every other game we're like kind of slavering over because we can see goals and excitement. Yes. But this is kind of got. What's this going to be like? Can you well, imagine, imagine, of what's well, imagine if, can yes, you imagine you were, if yes, Messi... Yes, you were talking about how they're going to stop Messi. Um, now you're, now hold you're on, no, let me finish. <laughs> can you imagine if Messi was injured? Oh, right. No, what he's, what he's would not, we be talking about? He's not injured. not injured. Yeah, but I'm just saying that... We're talking about the Netherlands here. Yeah. You think of the history of the Dutch and the way they play the game and everything, and we're struggling to find really good, positive things to say. And if you take Messi out of the equation, we're kind of doing the same thing with Argentina. Right. And it's the quarterfinals of the World Cup. Yes. It's a Stay little well. strange, isn't Don't it? Stay in bed.
I mean, I just, was, mate, I mean, you just watch the highlights. Right, Don. If there's any. Welcome to the show, Don. How do you stop Messi? Uh, well, I heard Van Dijk talking about him today, and he said, um, I'm pretty sure it was tongue in cheek, but he's pretty sure. What he was saying, he said, well, when, when we're on the attack, we've got to be careful because Messi will be sleeping somewhere, but then all of a sudden he'll come alive. And I think that's been his tournament. I think. You know, I think he's been playing on emotion. I think in some games he's been anonymous, but in other times he's lit the games up. I think the Mexico game, I think, off the top of my head, where he got the winning goal and it was like he was drifting, weren't particularly playing well, but, but then come up with that moment of magic, that moment of genius where all of a sudden I think he's, his World Cup's starting to light up. I think it's gathering momentum. Um, I think tactically, I think like the boys are saying, Dan, I think tactically this is the most interesting game because Van Gaal for sure will have a plan. But I think he might get his sort of teeth into it a little bit too much and stifle the game. I don't think Argentina are one of the best teams in the tournament. I've said that since day one. Defensively, they're not particularly good. They don't really dominate the ball. I think the Dutch will dominate. But I still think it'll be really, really close. It'll be tight. Uh, Van Hol's press conferences have been great entertainment in this competition and he didn't let us down looking ahead to this game. Di Maria was critical uh, of the time that he managed him at United. And he said, well, Di Maria calling me the worst manager he's ever had. He's one of the few players with this opinion. I'm really sorry about this and I find it sad he said this. Memphis had to deal with it too in Manchester and now we kiss each other on the mouth. Do people love him or hate him in the Netherlands, <laughs> Pascal? Well, it's a bit of both, <laughs> I think. <laughs> well, uh, most of the people like him uh, because uh, there's no doubt he, uh, about him. He's a, he's a very good uh, coach and he's a very good manager. Uh, and of course, he likes uh, to make some jokes in his mind. It's a joke. <laughs> um, not everyone uh, can uh, really uh, uh, accept that joke and, and, and understands maybe that joke. But uh, yeah, you, you hate him or you love him. And well... I don't know exactly um, if the most people will love him, I think, and, and some hate him because of his arrogance <laughs> or uh, with jokes like this. But uh, I, I'm sure we're going to miss him because, like you said, every press conference, he don't let us down. There's, there's a lot of entertainment How big a disappointment like this. Will he's be he's it dancing when he... <laughs> How big a disappointment will it be, Pascal, if they don't make it past Argentina? Well, the goal set before this tournament was a quarter-final. Uh, but of course, he always said uh, as well, there is a big chance we can win the World Cup. He, he didn't say we will win the World Cup, but there is a big chance we can win the World Cup. Um, yeah, in my opinion, my prediction before the tournament was quarter-final, Argentina, and then we're out. It's still possible, uh, but yeah, well, maybe there is also a little chance they can go on and go into the semi-final. Uh, so, of course, there will be a lot of disappointment when they go out uh, tomorrow, but yeah, we will see. He's, uh, always, he's always carried a bit of arrogance, or a lot of arrogance. Uh, yeah. But but I think his recent health <laughs> battles, to me, seem, seems to have, Van Hal, that is, seems to have given him a slightly different perspective, not to say that he still hasn't got a lot of confidence. And himself, but I think he has sort of mellowed a little bit. We've seen that in this competition. Let me tell you about Di Maria. One of the things when Di Maria was at Manchester, he wasn't up for the fight. Manchester United were not in a good place. He wasn't up for the fight. He goes to PA, he's off the back of Real Madrid, where they pretty much not got it their own way, but they dominated. Comes to Manchester, it's a bun fight, didn't fancy it. Goes to PSG, get it their own way. Happy, happy Di Maria. Goes to UV, <coughs> guess what UV is at the moment? A bun fight. Yeah. Where's, he, where's he been? Nowhere to be seen. Yeah. Nowhere to be seen. You wouldn't want to be in the trenches with that guy, right? So I'm sure Van Gaal's laughing that off, and I'm, I think secretly he'll be hoping one of his Dutch players sticks one on him <laughs> really early tomorrow. Yeah. But not getting sent off, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's not the first time he's heard the next player with a with a uh, a grudge mm. against his management style. Mm.